Oh, and welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation with me, your host, Owen. Guys, it is the day after we finally got rid of Ross Wilson. Ross Wilson, our sporting director, who many fans uh, obviously wanted rid of, has now gone. He has departed. He has gone to Nottingham Forest. Um, good luck, Nottingham Forest. Anyway, the question obviously now on the lips of many Rangers fans is, who is next? Who is the next sporting director? It's also another question as well. I was uh, watching Rangers review this morning whilst out walking the dog and uh, one question kept coming up. Why do we need a sporting director? Why do we need a director of football? So I'm going to do two things in this uh, in this video. Number one, I'm going to answer the question why we need a sporting director, why we need a director of football. And then I'm going to talk to you about five possible candidates for the job that have been identified in a number of media sources, um, newspapers, websites and other areas. So first of all, why do Rangers need a director of football? Why do they need a sporting director? Well, you look at most modern football teams, you know, you look at the Premier League in England, you look at the uh, Serie A, you look at La Liga, you look at Ligue 1, you look at, even at the Championship in England. Most of those teams and the successful teams have a sporting director and the and there is a clear division of roles between the sporting director or director of football and the uh, manager or the head coach as he's sometimes termed in terms of those um of, of the actual playing squad now how they divide the jobs up often is differs from club to club some clubs the sporting director and director of football is solely responsible for identifying the players for bringing the players in for giving the players to the head coach and the head coach is uh, there just to coach the team and that is his only job yes he does have some say on the playing staff but at the end of the day it goes it is the sporting director who picks and and chooses and uh, works with uh, signing players and, and negotiating transfer fees and negotiating contracts. In other clubs, the sporting director, technical director is given a list of names by a manager. The manager identifies the players, but that is all the manager does. He identifies the players he wants and it is then moved to the sporting director or the director of football, whatever his job title is, to actually go and get those players. That's pretty much how it works. And then the sporting director will negotiate the transfer fees, negotiate the contract, keep up the contract to the with existing players etc etc now back in the day back in the day of Walt, the late great Walter Smith of Sir Alex Ferguson of Brian Clough uh, you know of the legends of the past you had a situation where the manager did everything the manager picked the players the manager signed the players the manager negotiated the transfer fee the manager um you know negotiated the contracts the ma manager renegotiated the contracts he coached the team etc etc now that is really not possible in the modern game. You know, the modern game with the amount of money swishing around, with with the pressure on time of, of the of the manager stroke head coach, there was really need a need of division of labour there. And you know, the way that the Rangers have the sporting director role working, and the way that many clubs in the in the EPL have the sporting director working, is this: that the manager will identify the players, and he will coach the team. And that's his responsibility there. He is solely focused on that first team squad. And that's what you want at the end of the day. The guy you pick to manage your first team to be focusing solely on bringing in the players he wants and coaching them. Once it goes beyond that to negotiating transfer fees, uh, to negotiating contracts, to renegotiating contracts of players whose contracts are expiring, of managing the youth setup, of managing reserve team setups, of managing you know infrastructure, things like that. That needs to be taken away from the manager, and that's what the sporting director is for. There, he's kind of like the CEO of football operations in a way, and you don't want your you don't want your manager to be bogged down realistically with all that other stuff when he's got the responsibility of actually just coaching and improving the team um and i think that is something that is why we need that sporting director we don't want michael beale you know taking away from the coach from the coaching side of the thing thing from, from preparing the first team from improving the first team which you undoubtedly can do what we want we want him to do is, is to focus on that and not on negotiating contracts on transfer fees renegotiating contracts etc etc so that's why you have a sporting director now second point is who is going to be the new sporting director obviously this is a massive summer coming up for Glasgow Rangers there is a huge expectation on the club to bring in new players nine players out of contract some in contract players that we do think will be moved on in the summer you know players coming into the final years of their deal as well so decisions to make on the likes of Borna Barisic and John, John Lundstrom for example who are both going to the final years of their contract and realistically like I've said on multiple videos we don't want to be sat here in a year's time saying do we give Lundstrom a new contract do we give Barisic a new contract 
contract or do they walk for free? You know, realistically, if we're not going to keep them, we need to sell them this summer to bring some finance into the club. Now, there are five names that are currently being linked with the sporting director role at Rangers and five names that uh, I think differ in terms of realisticness and in terms of pie in the sky thought, in terms of ability, in terms of talent, in terms of ability to do the job. Now, the first person is someone that is currently at the club. That is John Park. John Park is the senior scout at Rangers. Uh, prior to that, he spent nine years with the Celtic as their transfer guru, the guy who identified and brought in the likes of Virgil van Dijk, Fraser Forster, Victor Wanyama and Dembele to Celtic. Um, he is the senior scout at Rangers and that is his job is to go and find players and bring them in. Now, it's unclear whether Park would want to step up, would want to take that extra responsibility on or even if Rangers would perhaps divide the role up in, in, in some way, shape or form to kind of give him the responsibility of signing the players but then take some of the other financial decisions away from him and have like a general manager kind of role uh, doing that other work or the managing director of the of Rangers, uh, I think, you know, doing the work. So it's unclear, obviously, whether John Park would want that step up in responsibility. You know, his track record is pretty good uh, in football. Previous to being with uh, that lot from across the city, he was the director of Hibs Academy, bringing through players like Scott Brown, Kevin Thompson, uh, Derek Reardon, Gary O'Connor, Stephen Fletcher, players of that calibre. So, you know, he has got a good track record um, with bringing through players. Now, obviously, there is one downside to Park uh, for a lot of Rangers fans, and that is that he is very closely identified with Ross Wilson, was part of the regime, was part of Ross Wilson's uh, was kind of Ross Wilson's right-hand man and was very close to Wilson. So obviously that's something that may well go against him with a number of Rangers fans. Uh, the next name that has been linked with uh, Rangers is Christian Nerlinger. Christian Nerlinger is a uh, former German player who played for three years at Ibrox. Uh, time at Ibrox was limited, however, by injury. Um, he has got experience of being a sporting director. He was sporting director for three years at, uh, I suppose for a number of years, sorry, at Bayern Munich. So obviously he's got a good, strong track record there. Now, obviously, uh, Nerlinger would have to operate with a vastly inferior budget to what he used to at Bayern. Uh, Bayern, obviously, who seem to have an unlimited budget when it comes to actually signing and bringing in players, but certainly has a good track record of bringing players into Bayern. Um, he was actually interviewed for the job um, of sporting director at Rangers when Rangers were in the lower leagues, but turned that job down for personal reasons. So it uh, remains to be seen whether he would now be interested in taking the job. Now Rangers are back at the top table of Scottish football. He has got an extensive and a very good Good knowledge of the European football market, you know, which realistically is where you need to be looking at to target players. You know, if you look at the fact that Rangers don't have substantial amounts of cash like the English Premier League, you would look at the fact that, um, you know, Europe, uh, Eastern Europe, South America are good places to go and get players of good ability who are not as expensive. You know, when you go shopping south of the border, whether it be for championship players or EPL players, you pay an English premium, don't you? The English players, players that play in the English game are notoriously more expensive than those in Europe and in South America. Who else has been linked with the job? Well, former Rangers player, another one, Davey Weir, um, has been linked with the club. Now, obviously, Davey Weir's name is slightly tinted, uh, tainted by the fact that he was part of the Mark Warburton regime and was sacked when Warburton was. Um, he's been a loans manager at Brighton. And after Dan Ashworth, who was the technical director at Brighton, was picked up by Newcastle United um, to to take on their, their Saudi millions to go and try and improve that team. Um, Davy Weir stepped up and is now the new technical director at Brighton. Um, obviously, Brighton are a club that have got a reputation for bringing through and attracting and finding good players for relatively cheap amounts of money. Uh, you know, for example, the guy, that Trossard guy they signed, uh, who then sold on to, to Arsenal for a substantial amount of cash. So he has got, a, so there is a track record for Brighton there. To what extent Weir played a role in that, I'm not 100% clear at this moment in time. Weir may be someone who it is difficult to attract, though. You know, if he is in that technical director, he is in that technical director role at Brighton and obviously is getting Premier League money. So Premier League teams obviously can pay a whole lot more than what Rangers can. Now, someone else who is perhaps an outsider for the job, but again, could be an option that doesn't actually cost the earth is this guy here, Paul Mitchell, who I would hazard a bet that none of you have ever, ever heard of. Um, he has an extensive football CV, having worked with Spurs, 
RB Leipzig and Monaco. So has an excellent knowledge of the European market in Germany and in France, uh, especially working with RB Leipzig, who are famous for obviously finding young players, bringing young players through and developing them and then selling them on for a profit, which is the trading model that Rangers seem to be interested in. He is currently employed as the sporting director at Monaco. However, he wants to return to the UK this summer and is leaving his job as Monaco sporting director. He wants to come back to the UK. He was also part of the team that brought, it was also part um, of the Spurs organisation that brought Deli Ali and Hyung Sun Min to, to Spurs as well. So again, another possible candidate for him. The final candidate is a guy who I think is a bit more pie in the sky and perhaps is unrealistic, is this guy here, Michael Edwards. Michael Edwards was sporting director at Liverpool for a long time. Um, quit last year because he wanted a break from football. However, it is now thought that he does want to return to the game. But he did that turn down Chelsea earlier this year when Todd Bowley took over. Um, now, if it is that English clubs are genuinely interested in Michael Edwards, this could be a real impossibility for Rangers to go and get a guy like this, given the fact that obviously English clubs have substantially more cash than Glasgow Rangers will have. But certainly five interesting names indeed. There are bound to be other names that are linked over time, but this is a key appointment for Rangers, something they've got to get right and got to get right soon. You know, the there is an urgency there. There's five names that Beal identified. There is an urgency to go and get those players, get the players in nice and early, get them here and ready to go, ready for pre-season in July. You know, this summer is huge for Rangers. There is going to be such, I think, a turnover in the playing staff and possibly in, in other staff around, around the club. And I think that whoever is appointed, whether it be Park, whether it be Mitchell, whether it be Weir, whether it be Nerlinger, whether it be Edwards, it needs to be someone in sooner rather than later and with the, that brief to really make those changes along with, the, obviously, Michael Beal's consultation on this. But a big appointment for Rangers coming up. So Rangers fans, any of those five names you fancy, let me know in the comments below. And obviously any questions about sporting directors, let me know as well. Thank you so much for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. I'll be back to speak to you again very soon here on the channel. I'm going to check out the podcast tonight of myself, Victoria, Cody and Jordan talking all things Glasgow Rangers. Guys, be back soon. Please hit that sub, ring that notification and give this video a like.